Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. First thing first, of course, starting with uh, introduction. Uh, introduction that always confused me rhythmically because I wasn't able to get a count on it. I listened to it countless times and I just figured that what happens is that the first stroke is, of course, not on the one of the bar, but it's rather on the one, two, and. One, two. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's my conclusion. That's how I play it. So what are the chords? It's what, what I talked about in the introduction, that very happy, jangly uh, chords sound that is produced a lot in, in, in a large part by the combination of fretted notes up the neck combined with open strings. It's one of my favorite sounds on the guitar. I use it uh, whether in pop arrangements or jazz arrangements. I use a lot of fingerings uh, that uh, uh, use fretted notes up the neck and combine them with open strings. It's one of the most beautiful sounds on the guitar. At any rate, it's uh, a voicing that strums basically all the notes, top, top five strings. So I kind of leave out the bottom string. So we have an open E. On the second string, I play the A on the 10th fret, second, uh, second string. On the third string, I play an F sharp, which is the three of D. Uh, I can do this with any of these fingers. I do it with fingers two and three. That works for me. Also the open D, it's a D chord. It's the one chord. I find that throwing in the A doesn't really hurt anything. It's that kind of, like I said, the jangly type happy chord. It has a ninth in it. One, two, three, four. Then I move to the five chord. So my, the D chord, the D is the tonal center of the song. So that was my one chord. 
I slide the same fingering down one, two, three, four, five frets, and I get this voicing, which acts kind of like my four chord, which would be an A, even though it has a D in it still, because that's kind of like a suspended four. It's a lot of these things in rock guitar when you strum are not really explainable perfectly well. In, in, in what would be pure uh, harmony or whatever, you know, it wouldn't sound the same on the guitar. It's something that works really well, um, on the piano, excuse me. On the guitar, it, would, it works really well. It sounds good. It's a guitar thing, let's put it that way. And that's fine because we're guitar players. So now I have the same open strings, the E, the open D and the A. So curiously, this chord, even though it has a D in it, which kind of obstructs the sense of root from the A, still works but now these two fingers that previously fingered an A and an F sharp now finger an E and a C sharp which are the just like in D they were the 5 and 3 of D now they are the 5 and 3 of A even though that D is ringing in there it does, just doesn't bother me so third chord in the series is a E minor, which is the two. Now let's, let's take a moment here to talk about the progression. What we have here for the most of the body of the song is a very diatonic progression in the key of D. We have our D, which is the one. We have the A, which is a, a five. I may have said four earlier. That was by mistake. It is uh, the five. So D, one is the five an e minor which would be a two and uh one five two so those are the main chord degrees that we are hearing in the song we might have also a four. Uh, and again, in this song, this is very uh, curious, the four and the two are closely related. When I'm doing... It may be heard as a uh, G. Not that he plays a G, but later in the song, when the whole song moves up to the key of E, moves up a step, we will see that indeed, instead of the two chord, we are going to have a four chord. So in E, now instead of F sharp, we'll have an A. So a little bit of background theory here, just to kind of understand where we are with the song. We're playing very simple chord degrees for the most part of the song in the key of D and the end goes up to the key of E. And we have, just to complete the picture of what we can expect harmonically, we have a section in D minor. Which is a kind of a D minor, one and five in D. So that's, that, that is it for the harmony in the song, just so you kind of know where we are. Let's get back to where we were. So we started here. Or you can do it with these fingers so you don't have to switch. What we have here is an E minor seven. Very full sounding chord. E at the bottom. Also press on the B on the fifth string, second fret, open. D, open G, but I also finger this D on the second string, third fret, because then you add these two melody notes on top, two, I wouldn't call them melody notes right now because there's no melody yet, uh, but they're kind of part of the movement in the harmony. If you're going to finger it like this, so the difference was between fingering 
this note with either the fourth finger or the third finger. If you do it with the third finger, you don't have to do any more further movements. That's that's more logical, but sometimes just by reflex. Also to give more space in between these fingers, I'll go here with the fourth finger, in which case I will have to when I when I want to do this, I'm running out of fingers here to do it, so I have to switch. Right there. And so uh, we enter the next part of the song, which is an instrumental where the whole band comes in.